Whoops. <laughs> well, that's the first time I've ever crashed the drone. Hey, what's up? I'm Eric Porter, and today I'm going to take you for a tour of my garage. This is my dream setup now, and it's taken a lot of work to get here, but I'm going to show you how I did it, and I'm going to show you how you can do it in your garage as well. Right now, we're in the upstairs, which is my office, as you can see. This is where I edit all my videos. So right outside my office, is the roll-in for my jumps. This is what saves me, it keeps me productive and motivated as well. So I can just roll out here, drop in, hit the jumps, hit the pump track, and then get back to work. So back inside here, this is the apartment. This is where all my friends and family stay. We built this whole place over a winter with my buddy Jess. Got a bed, kitchenette, bathroom. So I know everybody wants to see what's downstairs where all the cool stuff is. Let's head down there now and check it out. Got all my firewood storage here. And then right around here is the Traeger. You guys loved it when I had the ribs on there, so let's check what I got on here today. Got salmon, asparagus, potatoes. Got the full meal on the Traeger. This thing is the magic machine, smoking everything for perfect flavor. Inside we go. All right, so this is basically my adventure base camp. It's 480 square feet. It's a two bay garage, so it's got room for two cars. As you can see, there's no cars in here. There probably never will be while I live here. Cars live outside, the toys live inside. So like I said, with this being my adventure base camp, I needed a really good organizational system. I don't like spending my time organizing. I like playing outside, I like riding my bike, and I like snowboarding. Seth came out last year and helped me get a system, which gives everything a place to live, and it makes it easier to put it back where it goes. So we'll start over here. This is where the skis and snowboards live. For the snowboards, I needed longer hooks. I just ordered up some bookshelf hangers right here, and these are just those 90 degree metal things, and it just slides into your binding, and it works really well. Also, this is my LibTech Orca, which is the most fun board ever made. This is where all the cliff bars are. I've ridden for cliff bar for most of my career. My favorites currently are the cubes. These things are really good, the tart cherry flavor, and then shop blocks because everybody loves shop blocks. Down here I've got the shoe rack so this is just an easy way to organize everything for everybody. All this is just wood that I got at the store that um, Seth and I just put together into shelves. My favorite shoe is the Ride Concepts Powerline. It's got the higher protection on the ankle so it gives you a little bit more ankle protection, good support for the pedals and really sticky sole and it's got good toe protection as well. Moving over here we've got the kids workbench. So this was actually my workbench when I was a kid. My parents brought it out and now I'm able to pass it down to my kids. And we've actually got a park tool bolt-on stand right here so the kids can clamp their own bikes on and work on their own bikes. And then to keep with the style of the main workbench, we've got the slabbed wood right here. This is the storage wall for parts. All these bins we're just a bunch of cardboard boxes before Seth got here and helped with the organization. Basically, everything has a bin and a place to go so that when I'm done with it, I can put it away. When I need it, I can find it. These are the Lazine pumps. They're really nice stainless pumps. They look good and they work awesome and they're totally rebuildable. This is the large diameter mountain pump and then it's got a digital gauge because I'm really picky about having the right tire pressure so I can put it exactly where I want it. So this is the wood-burning stove. This is a Yodel. This is from the 70s. It's a Scandinavian stove. It's really efficient. It burns really hot. And you can actually cook on these surfaces as well if you wanted to. Up here, I've got some stuff that's really special to me and to my career as a pro rider. So this frame on the right is from Iron Horse, which is my first bike sponsor. Back in 2002, I started riding for them. Once I made it as a pro rider through street riding and dirt jumping, I ended up with a signature frame from them, which was an absolute dream come true that I never thought would happen. Over here is the next signature frame I had. So this is when I rode for Haro bikes. And to have a signature bike with Haro, was as much of a dream come true as you could ever have. To be on the team with Ryan Nyquist and Dave Mira was part of Haro. And this was the bike that I rode in Crankworks and I rode in all kinds of film projects as well. And this was done with really cool graphics from my friend Pete Demos who worked there. And the idea was that he made beer labels with my name on them. And then it looks as if you peeled off the beer labels and stuck them to the frame. So that was the design concept. And then in the middle are the bars from Kelly McGarry's bike from Rampage when he flew 
130 feet on a 100 foot jump and landed flat and bent them right down. Those are a good memory from that. And then the very back is a fork from the first Diamondback that I had. So I broke the frame and it's gone, but that was back in 1997. So I learned how to do everything on that bike. So it was a really special one to me and had that through my college years. Moving over here to my workbench, this was a much better looking way to organize things than the pegboard that we had up before. So again, everything has a place to live. We've got bins here for parts and fluids and everything to keep things organized down there. Up here, we've got the tools that I use all the time on the board, and then the rest of the tools are in the toolbox. I put my Milwaukee tools up here because I found that these are some of the most used tools I have. So my impact driver, this flashlight, and then uh, the leaf blower. This thing is incredible. I've used it for basically everything. I use it way more than I thought I would. Some cool stuff about the workbench zone is I have a charging station down here for the Milwaukee tools. And then I've got a Goal Zero Yeti 1000 right here. This is something I bring with me when I travel because you can charge things for like a week in the woods with this. So when I'm doing film trips and traveling by truck, I can just keep this in there, power everything off of that, and I'll be good to go. Then I also have this little guy up here. So this is outlets on the top whenever I need them. And then the very top of it has a iPhone charger where you just set it down and it starts charging. And then I got a little Bluetooth speaker up here on this little shelf, and then I can play music, listen to podcasts, that sort of thing, pass the time while I'm working on bikes. Some other stuff in this area is I've got the compressor down there. It's actually run over here and you can pull this out. I think it's got about 50 feet of hose so I can get out to the trucks if I need to pump up the truck tires. And more than anything, I'm using this to put tubeless tires on my bikes. And then the same style as that for outlets is right here. I can pull this out 50 feet of cord wherever I need it and I don't have to get out extension cords. Another nice thing with the workbench is having the vise mounted right here. I use it way more than I thought I would. Moving over into the motorized zone, I've got chainsaws right here. So this is a still MS260 Pro. And then right up there, I've got the 460 Pro. I cut about four cords of firewood every winter. And then I also use the 460 for ripping boards, milling lumber. That's what I built the whole back of the workbench with. That's what I've built all kinds of stuff with in the backyard and we're gonna do a lot more building with it this year. Next to that is the tire storage. So I do a lot of testing with Kenda and help develop their tires. And so I've always got a bunch of tires. I'm always testing new stuff. This is a great way to hold all your tires in place. So I've just got a strip of wood underneath and then the shelves hold it up on either side. Underneath here, I've got a 1970 CB350. This was on my grandpa's farm. I saw this bike growing up the whole time and always dreamed about riding this bike. Back here is a 1979 Yamaha Hopper. It's like a Dumb and Dumber scooter. And then this is a ski -Doo Summit 850. This is the funnest thing ever. It's pretty ridiculous. It's actually super efficient too. It's a smokeless, um, really quiet two-stroke, but it's got a ton of horsepower. And then it's got the 165 track on it. So it's a deep snow snowmobile. And I use this for ski touring. I use it to get out in the backcountry. I take my kids out on it. And I also teach a lot of avalanche education on it to help keep everybody safe. Okay, now let's get to the part everyone's been waiting for, which is the bikes. I have 16 bikes in the garage right now. And it sounds like a lot, but I have a different bike for every type of riding from trials to downhill to road bikes to several different trail bikes for different purposes. And I also do a lot of testing for Diamondback and other companies that I ride for. I know I'm really fortunate to have what I have and we don't take it lightly, but it's pretty awesome. So to store this many bikes, you have to have a pretty innovative system. Otherwise it would take up the entire garage. So what I did was I took a log, took the bark off of it and hung that from the ceiling with these two by fours and some big bolts. And then we just used hooks that are just typical bike storage hooks, but they're hanging vertically from this beam up here. If they're vertical, they don't take up very much floor space. So that saves a ton of space. So for this rack, I built it with 100% two by sixes and some screws. So it's pretty simple. And all you do is you make these slots right here for the tires. So you build it around the tire and you make sure that it fits, whether it's a plus bike or a kid's bike or whatever, and it fits perfect for each slot. So this is a really simple and inexpensive way to make a bike rack for your own garage. This is the to-go wall. You grab your pack, helmet, glasses, and you're out the door. 
We've got the kids packs easy to reach and the adult packs are here. I've got everything lined up from quick ride with the fanny pack to a medium ride to larger rides. And then for trail helmets, my current go-to is the Axion. This is the new helmet from Pac. It's a little bit more affordable and it's just got really good ventilation, really comfortable and simple. You don't have to have a screw to adjust your visor. It just clicks into place where you want it, stays there. It's got a nice harness that moves up and down and then it's got spin as well, which is the rotational protection. So, And then down here, we've got the skateboard rack. This is something I made with just a tree and chopped off the top and the bottom, put a plank on the bottom to hold it. And then I just chainsawed slots there for the boards to hang out in. So that's it for the inside of the garage. I hope some of these ideas help you get better organization in your own garage. Now let's go outside and see how the boys are doing. How's it going guys? Milo, here's a tip when you're packing down. When you're packing it down, you gotta make sure it sounds like a, like a dong. Like a what? Like a dong. A dong? You know, like, dong, dong, dong. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> it's a true fact. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. We're gonna be getting into a lot more builds back here and we'll check in next week and see how this double's working out.